moment that we're going to be recording. I think people wish they could put me on mute sometimes and then it just. <laughs> and then, no, we're not going to do that. And then I'm going to go ahead in a moment here and I'm going to share my desktop. Give me one second. And everyone should be able to see my screen. It's beautiful. Great. Well, let me go ahead and get us kicked off this evening. I am an afternoon, depending on where you are in the world. I am super excited for this virtual meetup that we're having here today. Um, and I, before I get started with my normal spiel, when I get these things kicked off, I just have to say the, the beauty of having a virtual meetup. I know we all love our in-person meetings and those types of connections, but the beauty of having a virtual meetup is that you have access to expert speakers from all over the country. And for me, that's just such an amazing thing. And we get investors and students and people that are learning to invest from all over the country, and they're able to join these things through the through a couple of keystrokes. They're able to find a place where they can come and learn great information and how to build their wealth mindset and real estate investing. So, welcome to the Wealth Mindset and Real Estate Investing Virtual Meetup. My name is Chris Price. I'm the host of this of this meetup. I'm also the CEO and co-founder of Red Fox Multifamily. And what I want to let you all know is that the Wealth Mindset and Real Estate Investing Meetup is open to all who are interested in growing their generational wealth through passive real estate investing and increasing their financial intelligence. This meetup is for the busy professional and retirees and students across uh, various industries. The individuals in this group make a good living and they have discretionary income to invest in real estate for its proven wealth building power, but don't necessarily have the time, the skill set, the networks or the or the know how really to, to do it at speed and at scale. And so this meetup focuses on helping us all grow our wealth mindset by learning how to build and preserve wealth while developing and maintaining an abundance mindset and the meetup will focus on multifamily real estate investing as well as other proven ways to build wealth through real estate through passive investments and we all are familiar with those but this one in particular is going to absolutely focus on multifamily and with respect to multifamily we're sponsored by red fox multifamily who works with investors who are dis dissatisfied this with the low returns from the savings accounts and bonds and investors who are concerned with the volatility of the stock market, which I know many of you have seen. If you, for those of you who still have a, a 401k or IRA or all those things, you've seen the up, ebbs and flows of how the volatility have, has impacted just this year alone, your 401k account. And so we're focused on being able to put concerning investors' capital to work with them for them by investing in exceptional multifamily properties in the best markets nationwide. The demand for multifamily rental units continues to grow and is driven by both the preference of certain demographics as well as unaffordable single-family home ownership options. So Red Fox Multifamily we're based here in White Plains, New York, and we partner with investors whom the stability of real estate investment appeals to, um, but the stress of property ownership does not. And so we give our investors the benefit of real estate investments through what we call syndications, and you're going to learn a whole lot about that this evening. So this is basically a group investment in multifamily property. So a couple of logistical things before we get into the today's uh, content. So if you're not speaking, please mute your lines when you are when you're not. Please, if you could, unless the speaker invites you to, hold your questions to the end of the presentation. Um, as I mentioned at the just a few moments ago, this presentation will be recorded. And this material, you must know, does not constitute an offer or a solicitation to purchase securities. This information is only for uh, information person purposes and should not be construed as business, financial, or legal advice. 
And then finally, if you are interested in connecting with me in particular, my contact information is here. You can you may scan the QR code or just email me at Chris at Red Fox Multifamily, um, and we can get in contact to discuss uh, anything about multifamily real estate if you're interested. So for today, and I'm going to get ready to introduce our speaker here uh, in just a moment, but we're going to, after that, we'll get into our speaker's presentation, we'll get into a Q&A, and if time permits, we'll have a little bit of time uh, to do some virtual networking and just share uh, about what we're doing, how we're doing. And so let me now transition to introducing you all to Miss Julie Holly. Um, who is going to talk to us about the mindset of a multifamily investor. But before we get into that, I have to share this. So um, this over this summer, back in June, early June of this year, I had the chance to attend the Dealmaker Live conference, uh, which is a big real estate investing, multifamily real estate investing conference that Michael Blanc and his team run. And they held it out in Dallas. And I had an opportunity to attend that conference. And I had a chance to uh, you know, go and rub el elbows with a lot of people. One of those people just happened to be Miss Julie Holly, who's going to be speaking with us here today. And I had a chance to, I, I, the, through, the, through the Lord's blessings, I had a chance to be at the same table as her. Um, even before that, I had a chance to, to bump into her and another uh, colleague in the in the uh, the the auditorium area or atrium area of the hotel just to talk about and I learn about what she was doing and the podcast that she had and you know and then we you know through the again through through good graces I had an opportunity to sit directly next to her at lunch and just was so enamored by her presence by her content by the the what she was doing and how she was going about doing it and had no idea that several months later that I would have the opportunity to have her on this meetup um to to come and present um but I but I took a swing and and she graciously accepted and I'm so thankful for her for being able to take time out of her busy schedule as a mom a wife a business owner uh to come and educate us all here on on the mindset of a multifamily investor so so Julie thank you in advance but let me give you a few tidbits about Julie before I hand it over to her in just a moment so Julie is the uh the founder of three Keys Investments, and Julie is a speaker as well, and she helps people like all of you find their freedom through multifamily real estate investing so that they can live the life of their dreams. She has invested in single family homes, house hacked before. Anyone who's done that knows the pains of house hacking and doing all those things. She has also invested in single family homes. Um, she has managed properties from one, a thousand miles away and passively invested in multifamily assets as well. And currently, Julia is passively investing in nearly 300 doors, which is probably more now that she just recently closed on a property. Congratulations. Um, and strategically partnered in 68 uh, Atlanta-based and general partner in, in 387 units. Her podcast, The Conscious Investor, which all of you should make sure that you take a moment out, pull your phones out right now now and go find it on on iTunes or or for those of you who are Android users like me on your Google podcast or YouTube channel go find it and subscribe right now add it to your queue because it, it's all it's awesome make sure that you you get into her her sphere because you're going to be really enamored with what she has to bring today so and you can enjoy over 300 uh, of her episodes on the mindset and how highly successful investors overcome limitations and become unstoppable forces of success. So Julie, care, Julie's care for uh, financial well-being of investors, as well as her experience as a public school teacher and ability to relate with people, allow her to raise capital for the team's offerings. So she's regularly speaking at national events like the one I told you just earlier, where she was with one of many powerhouse speakers um, on the stage um, in the general sessions at Michael Blanc's conference, um, as well as be making herself accessible, you know, at lunches with people like me, um, which is truly awesome. And she also uh, serves clients as a high performance coach and runs the five week book and networking club 
to to consciously support people. Um, her free time is filled with uh, with backcountry mountain biking and walking in the snow. I, I've witnessed that also with family and friends and and baking delicious treats and to share with with others. Writing grants for nonprofit organizations and or mentoring and young entrepreneurs and a whole host of other things that I'm sure um, you you will learn about this evening. So if you could all uh, join me in welcome, welcoming uh, Julie to talk about the mindset of a multifamily investor. So Julie, I'll, I'll pass it over to you. I'll be presenting your slides tonight and thank you in, again in advance. Oh, thank you so much, Chris. It was so much fun to meet you. And if you have not yet gone to a live in-person event that is an actual event. Now, meetups are really great. Um, I don't have the luxury of going to meetups. I'll explain why in just a moment. But when you go to an in-person event, the energy and the opportunity to connect with people is just, it's electric. And you know, what's special and unique about the multifamily niche is that, you know, you can have people that are highly experienced and people that haven't even placed their first investment yet passively or actively. And yet, everybody is welcoming and encouraging of each other and growing and gaining and learning. So even wherever you're at in your journey, you have an opportunity to add value to the people around you. And I just, I, Chris, I remember that lunch. It was really, it was a very, very transparent lunch. I think I was like, yeah. So, you know, when people say, I, you know, cause I just, I like to have as much transparency as possible to cut through some of the nonsense that's out there. Um, so thank you guys so much for coming and being at this meetup. Uh, Chris was saying, Hey, you, you got to tell people where you're at. So, uh, I live and we all face a lot of limitations in our investing. And I happen to have a geographical limitation. I grew up in California. My kids were born in Denver, Colorado, and now I currently reside 30 miles South of the Canadian border in Idaho. So not Boise, you would have to listen to one entire audiobook to drive from where I live down to Boise. So I am at the very tippy top, even further north than Coeur d'Alene. And it is gorgeous. We've had uh, two snow days the last couple of days, which my kids have absolutely loved. So uh, and that's also to encourage you that um, so I had geographical limitations when I began my, you know, investing in apartment syndications. That did not stop me. And so if this is something that you're interested in, there are no limitations. It's all about solving the problem and finding a solution for whatever the limitation is. And you can do it. And I did it. I'm proof of it. And I feel like I'm continually trying to find another solution. <laughs> so uh, even when Chris and I were talking about, um, you know, speaking to you and what value we could offer, particularly this time of year, as we're transitioning into, you know, a brand new year, you know, we both thought, you know, just understanding the mindset, some thinking to ground us as we are preparing for our next investments and preparing our goals and projections for the following year. So without that, um, <clears throat> Excuse me, Chris, if you go ahead and go to the next slide, I would like to start with a little story. And I'm going to give a huge shout out to any and to my assistant, um, Louie, who puts together all of my presentations. I have zero skills and abilities, and this team sport of apartment syndication transcends everything. It's all about investing in people that are going to be aligned with you and support you. So, um, you know, if you think, oh, I don't have enough money to go to that event, or I don't, maybe you're at the level where I don't have enough money to hire an assistant. You don't have enough money to not do any of that. So let's talk about Joe and Pete, because you know what, they actually can really tell the story really well. And this is about investing. And let's go ahead and jump in because they were both read the exact same farmer's almanac. And they were like, oh, crap. We got like, no precipitation coming. This is going to be a bad year for crops. And so Joe, he's like, man, you know what? It's been a, a really rough, you know, last few years. I am not going to invest. I'm not going to like, I'm just not planting anything this year. Now I grew up in an ag land in California. 
I haven't met in farmers who do that. I just have to put that as an asterisk. This is just a cautionary tale type thing, right? <laughs> but Joe's like, I am not planting any crops this year and we're just going to pull back on our budget. And so he and his family, that's what they do. They don't plant any crops and they just pull back and they're living on a shoestring and they don't do any of the things that they normally do. And so some of their traditions as a family are altered and you know it's a little colder in the house because they don't want to run you know the heater and you know they're going out and collecting firewood which by the way is a lot of fun um but you know they're having to do some different things and you know just to make ends meet and they're really just stressed out of their minds because well it's they're predicting it's going to be a really terrible year and you know we're just not going to plant crops and meanwhile pete he's like geez, that stinks. Well, we're going to just try our best and we're going to go for it. And he and his family have an abundance mindset and they just decide we're going to plant the crops like usual. We're going to do everything. We're going to stick to our plan. We're going to make some adjustments. Maybe we're going to get some different seeds, but they stick to their plan and they stick to their family traditions. They go on the same trips and some, you know, even when that fancy new restaurant opens up, you know, Pete takes his wife out, even though it's a little bit more and well, they don't know how the crops are going to turn out. But they live life and they live life fully and they're happy and they're content. And you know what happens at the end of the year, Pete's family, they're set. There it wasn't a bumper crop or anything like that, but they were very well provided for and cared for. And they had enjoyed the entire season, the entire months leading up that Joe's family had been just stressed out of their minds and very uncomfortable. Pete's family had been comfortable and they weren't stressed out of their minds. And They'd been enjoying life, deepening their relationships in really fun ways. And, you know, since people like Joe decided to step out because, well, you know, it's not going to be the best year, man, Pete made a very sizable profit because there weren't as, there wasn't as much competition. And that's what's happening right now in real estate. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about our mindset because how we are thinking and perceiving the um, realities, you know, the news and the information that is we're being bombarded with, how we're thinking and receiving it is going to affect directly how we are investing. And so let's dive into this a little bit further. The reality is, is that we're going to invest wisely in every single market cycle. <laughs> so we know why as investors, we know why we are investing. Some of us are investing because we want cash flow right here and now. And some of us are investing because we want something when we are more mature in life. And there are so many other reasons that people invest, but understanding why we are investing allows us to make wise choices in any market because we know why we're doing it, the how we go about doing it, our execution, that is going to shift with our mar with the markets, but our philosophy, our willingness to be more like Pete and say, okay, you know, this market is really not my favorite. I really don't like these interest rates. Man, I'm really frustrated with the way these lenders are, you know, backing out at the last minute, but I'm still going to figure this out. Yeah, feel free. Go, go ahead and move on. And so, you know, we understand why we're investing and we just keep going on. Um, so let's talk about some of the reasons why we invest, because um, I know we have at least one person and I just think it's great that a call it, you can get, you know, like use something like this, a meetup for, a, you know, part of your college class. High five to you, Taylor. Good job. <laughs> um, sometimes we invest in real estate because, um, you know what, it's a tangible real asset. Stocks, you know, they are paper assets and they, the two assets, they are not correlated to each other. So what's happening on the stock market isn't directly affecting necessarily what's happening in the real estate market. And so because they're uncorrelated, some people might be invested in both asset classes, but they know that, well, I can, they're not related to each other. And so I can invest and it's a sound investment. 
Lots of people love being in something that is less volatile than the stock market. In fact, I have um, passive investors that lost at least forty thousand dollars minimum on it, you know, in the stock market and through their four hundred one k. And we're so excited to roll over and their funds from their four hundred one ks to put them into a real town tangible asset that they believed that over time was going to grow without the ups and downs roller coaster. And so that's really nice having that peace of mind. And as I mentioned, real estate, it's tangible. I know we were talking a few of us before, you know, we began this, um, we were talking about where we're invested in, and lots of us are invested in Alabama. I'm invested passively in Huntsville, Alabama, and I love it. I actually went there. I just wanted to see what am I invested in? How cool is it to travel somewhere with your family and say, Hey kids, <laughs> you know, we own part, like we're, we're part ownership in this. Like this is, we're doing this right here. And so we can actually not just show our kids some, um, you know, my kids are invested, we're invested in crypto. My kids have some of their own and, you know, they love to pull, pull it up and look at what's going on on the crypto that's on a screen. And I think the more we can get away from screens, it's more better. And so if we can actually take our kids and say, Hey, look at this and here's what's going to happen with it. It's really exciting. And so we're not just locked into a piece of paper that um, really the value is going to be determined by someone's attitude in the boardroom. It's something that's real and it's not going away and it's providing a real, um, it's something that every single human needs, a place to live. I do also wanna point out that um, Apartment complexes are not the only real estate investment that you can make passively. You can passively invest in RV parks and um, self-storage. You can passively invest in mobile home parks. You can also passively invest in triple net lease um, and other commercial assets. So this is just, you know, I personally focus on apartment complexes, but there are, I it would be... I, I don't want to mislead anyone to think that this is the only way that you can invest in real estate in a, in a, um, in a passive way. So it doesn't serve me well, but it might serve you really well to know that. <laughs> so let's go ahead and talk about some of the sleep at night principles. We have three key principles that, you know, I don't want to lose the shirt off my back as the market is shifting. And um, we definitely don't want to lose the roof over our head as we're trying to grow and expand our portfolios. And so there are some simple things that we need to keep in mind. And remember at the beginning, I said, this is a mindset thing. And as our market is shifting, we need to keep some of these thoughts at the front of our mind. Now I'm speaking from um, a lifetime of experience, literally. Um, when I was born, right before I was born, my dad actually went into residential real estate following his father-in-law into that path. And so I grew up in the residential real estate space. And I'm very clear to say that because that is not the same thing as being a real estate investor at all. However, I was a very alert, nerdy kid that in sixth grade liked to read Architectural Digest and things like that and walk through new construction with my dad. Um, and so I, I was very aware and alert and I could see as I lived in California, the ebbs and flows of the economy. And I could directly feel that in my home as, you know, oh, times are good. There's more discretionary cash and the economy shifted and real estate's tighter. And so these, um, the economies behind real estate are something that I've been very aware of throughout my entire life. So one of the number one things that happens is that we get into this mindset of what if, <laughs> and this is really a dangerous place to live. Um, we think, and I would love to, you know, give some feedback on this. One of the what ifs that happened in 2020 and if you were around then and paying attention, everybody was freaking out like, oh my gosh, there's an inverted year yield curve. The economy is going to crash. And, and everyone was just like so determined that this is the moment, you know, this pandemic and the, you know, yield curve and all these things like this is the end. And you know what? A lot of people were like Joe and they chose to say, mm, no, you know what? I'm going to hold my cards tight. Cause you know what? What if this is the end? I'm not doing that. 
and they missed out on an extraordinary opportunity to build their portfolio. Amazing interest rates. Um, the cost of capital was still low and all the capital was available. You could get loans and they weren't gonna back out at the last second. <laughs> and and um, you know things were trading with relative ease even then. Sure, you had to have more in reserves. You know, there were some other nuances, but it was still easy. And so the people that were playing the what if game in their head, they lost out. So I want to challenge you that as we are shifting, perhaps, <laughs> right? <laughs> Is it who knows? Until it's over, we really don't know. But as we're shifting from, um, you know, a bull market into a bear market, remember why you are investing. Your solid grounded investing principles should not be changing how you execute is going to be adjusted, but you're still going to continually invest in every single market because you're a smart investor and you know what you're looking for. I know like our metrics aren't changing just because we're going into it. I mean, our metrics have always been conservative and that's what we say, hey, it's always conservative. Like, what, why would we all of a sudden change how we're doing things just because we're always anticipating a shift in cap rates. We're always anticipating um, rents, you know, potentially adjusting in or flatlining or maybe even going down just a smidge. So we're always thinking about these things. Here's the what if most people are not thinking about. What if it goes well? <laughs> People forget to ask that and people have a tendency to err on the side of the negative what if. So let's talk about that. What if you buy an asset and all of a sudden the rents go down? Well, you underwrote it with your sound grounded investing principles. So if those rents do go down, you're still in a cash flowing position. So you're still going to be cash flowing and it's going to be okay. I don't think anybody is going to be complaining about that, but that also is going to depend on, on your own investment principles. So based on mine, it's like, well, worst case scenario, we're still going to cash flow. Even if we lose a little bit on the rents, we're still going to cash flow. It's going to be okay. So play the what if game very cautiously and always ask yourself, what if on both sides, if you're going to go to the negative side, you equally need to go to what if this does turn out. And I kind of touched and alluded on this, buying right. We're always cautious and careful about how we are buying. What are the terms of the loan? And these are things that don't shift with the economy. You are always looking at making the best purchase, buying the right asset at the right time in the right way with the right people. And so is that going to shift just because the economy is shifting? No, you're still going to make sure you're buying correctly. And then lastly, we're going to trust our team. Who you are around with, and I, I'm very, everybody knows that I'm very bullish about knowing the people that you are invested in. But this is one element that as, um, as you progress, you know, and as this market does shift, it's critical to know the character of the people that you are surrounded by. Be, be cautious about who you are partnering with. Don't be afraid to say, you know what, let's go on to, and get a background check on everybody just cause, and guess what? That's going to build some credibility when you are working with your passive investors. Um, and, and they maybe maybe it's a new partnership. They have, they don't know your partners, but they know, like, and trust you. Well, you know what? I know my partners. I know you don't know my partners. We've also done background checks on everybody here and, you know, everybody's on the up and up. So not just really raising the level of trust for you, but also raising the level of trust for your investors because our investors are the number one. Those are the people that we are taking care of. Um, and that's like our fiduciary obligation. And obviously this is my opinion, but our fiduciary is number one to our silent partners who have no voting rights um, and to make sure that we are doing right by them and following through with what we're going to do, um, executing on our business plan. And it's really difficult to do that if there's, um, you know, infighting on the team in any capacity at all. Um, and I've had the, the, I've been blessed to be able to follow people who are 
have come up has been um, a saving grace to everybody on their team because they could simply refer back to this is the operating agreement said it's no big deal this is what we all agreed to from the very get-go so trusting our team is going to give you confidence that even when things go sideways because you know what you're not going to have a deal that is going three you know three five seven years <laughs> that's not going to have a hiccup of some sort and you need to be able to say I know I can depend on my teammates in every capacity. And the final element that I wanted to talk about, um, and I'm throwing this in there and I'm actually like getting teary eyed because I want to talk about the ego. <laughs> and really uh, when Chris and I had lunch back in June at Dealmaker Live, fantastic event. Um, you know, there we, we actually touched, we broached the topic of ego a little bit. And as we have um, some of these shifts in our interest rates, as we have bridge loans that are, you know, and other financing terms that they're going to, we're going to have a lot of people that are displaced. Let me put it that way. We're going to have investors um, who, who made good investments and they're finding themselves in a very difficult situation. And we're going to have some investors that their egos maybe were a little bit bigger and they just wanted a whole bunch of doors and units and they just wanted to broadcast that, you know, whatever reason we're going to have some, um, you know, we're just going to have some accidents out there, you know, some collateral damage as economies shift. And so I want to encourage everyone here, and this is basically my own personal soapbox for a, one moment, is that as the economy shifts and as we see things taking place, I am let's continue to be the multifamily real estate investing niche that is classy and gracious and kind. And let's make sure that we're encouraging each other and that we're supporting each other. If we see your friends and you see an investor that's going into a, into a situation, into a deal that you think, you know, here's what I'm seeing about that. And don't be afraid to say what you're, what you're noticing. Even if you're a novice, you can ask questions. Hey, you know what? This just doesn't seem like the best situation to me. Can you explain how this works out? We can always seek to understand and help elevate people's thinking behind the choices that they're making, um, perhaps going into a deal or restructuring a deal. But regardless, um, this is an industry where we need to link arms and shoulder each other and really encourage each other. And most importantly, during a time of transition, it's a time where residents, well, number one, investors, and then the residents in the communities that we serve, and then the communities themselves, they need these apartment complexes to be up, functioning, running, and doing well. And so let's make sure that we're supporting each other in a powerful way to ensure that if we have some type of insight that we are offering that insight, if they need some encouragement, we can offer that. And you know what, in some cases, it might be mean, um, you know what, can we buy that off of you? Can we assume the loan? Can we come in here and recapitalize this? So there are going to be a lot of opportunities and let's make sure we do this in a gracious kind way. And um, it might be easy to point fingers and be like, I told you, you shouldn't have done that deal. And so let's make sure that, you know, we just go about this in a really powerful way because um, one of the things I love about the multifamily niche is how positive it is and how people support each other. And this is yet another way where this investing um, can cast a ripple effect across the entire investing stratosphere to say, wow, look how they're doing it. Maybe we don't have to throw elbows like we have been doing it. Maybe we can learn from them. Look, they're pulling it together. To, they're pulling things off together in a really powerful way um, and benefiting fitting the world. So I'll get off my soapbox on that. I hope that does encourage everyone. I wanted to share a personal goal because it's that time of year for me where I figure out, you know, part of my vision, which part of my vision am I going to really enhance this year? And, you know, my goal is to support 50 people through our investing and through the high performance coaching model. You can't have one without the other. You can be a great investor, but you can be completely bankrupt in the most important parts of your life. And, and you know what? 
you can become a great investor when you have a powerful mindset behind you. So if that's something that you are interested in, feel free, scan the QR code. Um, and Chris said it right. I love talking with people. I am accessible. I don't like to hide from people. I love to support people in leveling up in whatever part of life it is. So please do not hesitate to reach out um, to me in some capacity. And I think on the next slide, we might have... Yeah, my phone number is even on the next slide. So, you know, you can grab it off of there and shoot me a text or something. So um, I don't hide, hide behind a magic curtain. <laughs> and, and hopefully this is kind of short, neat and tidy, but hopefully this, you know, just helps elevate your mindset about investing. And if you want to learn more about the nuances over on the Conscious Investor YouTube channel, there's a playlist that can walk you through all the steps of multifamily investing and on the Three Keys website, you can download, you know, lots of literature on, you know, how simple it is and, and anything you want. There's so much available on the website. So thank you so much. And I look forward to connecting with each of you. Julie, that was awesome. Thank you so much for, for sharing. And I have to tell the community, for all of you that are joining here live, and for those of you who are watching the recording, take advantage and and connect with Julie directly. Um, she's making herself accessible to you to help you grow beyond the limitations that you have established for yourself as personally, professionally, as an investor, whatever the case may be. Do do yourself a favor as you as she mentioned. As we look and start to think about what we're going to be doing for 2023, wouldn't it be great to tap into someone who can help tap into something inside of you and your mindset to help you set on on the right on the right track? Um, don't don't pass up on that opportunity, folks. I really encourage you to do that. And while you're at it. <clears throat> Take time to follow Julie on all of her social media. Um, in, in, in addition to gaining insights into the mindset and her coaching and her and her just I find her content to be just purely uplifting um, in, in every aspect. And, and I only like to surround myself with like minded individuals, people that that uplift me and help bring me up and my mindset up. If you want a dose of that. Follow Julie and and they come with uh, pictures uh, with Julie and backdrops that look fake, but they're not. But they're just beautiful <laughs> snow filled <laughs> snow filled backdrops in in the mountains of Idaho. Um, and maybe occasionally you might see a moose walk in the background or something like that. But uh, take advantage of this, folks. I really encourage you to do that. And Julie, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to to share these insights with us this evening. So what I want to do now is I want to stop presenting and I want to allow um, the community here to uh, take a moment to ask you some questions. Um, and then um, and then once we do that, I'll go ahead and I will uh, ask you some questions as well. So, folks, if you are on for those of you who are on the line now, if you have a question um, or questions, plural, take yourself off mute. Or, or use the little uh, hand raising icon, um, ask your question of Julie and she'll go ahead and respond if you prefer. Um, you can also type it in, but I see that Chad has his hand up. So Chad, please take yourself off of mute and uh, go ahead and ask your question. Uh, hey there, Christopher and Julie. Great presentation thus far. I just had a quick question. Uh, are you, is anybody recording this by chance and will that recording be emailed out to those uh, that are here tonight? Yes, we are recording this evening's presentation and it will be uh, distributed out to everyone in the uh, on uh, in the meetup. And so you will receive a recording, a link to the recording. It will be posted on our YouTube channel. Great, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. You got it. That was an easy so, question. That was an <laughs> Thank easy you. One. So, you, uh, Yun Han, please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi, hi, Julie. Thank you for sharing today. Um, so, I, I just have a question since I'm a, uh, I'm a beginner uh, investor and I want to invest in multifamily, like small multifamily, two to four units. Um, I'm currently living in Jersey City, in New Jersey area. So, but I, I realized that the housings around the Jersey City area are very expensive. Um, compared to a lot of other markets in the country. So because I'm 
starting uh, as my first step, I'm I'm a little hesitant in um, investing in other area which are very far away from where I live. Um, so do you have any suggestions in terms of how to get started um, when especially you are living in an expensive area um, and how to go around that? Thank you. Oh, thank you. I love this question because um, we we face our, we face similar challenges. Um, my challenge where I live in a town of 2,500 is I don't have apartment complexes. <laughs> I'm like, eh, the closest thing to buy, right? It just isn't something that's accessible. And so what I always say is live where you want to live, invest where it makes sense. S-E-N-S-E -E and C-E-N-T-S, -E right? So you want it to be make sense both ways. And now the, the question is, right, this it actually goes directly to a mindset. And the mindset would be, okay, let me ask you this. If something were going wrong, uh, let's just say you have a triplex and something is going wrong in one of the units, uh, it has a toilet plumbing issue. Are you going to go fix it? No. Okay. Walk me through. What would you do? So probably, um, I'll probably before I have the, um, investment because if I'm deciding to go into a market where, um, the housing prices are generally lower, um, even though I'm getting maybe like lower cash flow, um, but still it would be a better start for me since I have limited capital. Um, so like, I think before I purchase the, um, the property, I would first look for a contractor or like property management team um, so that I have the connection. And then I will go ahead to assess the um, properties to see if the numbers make sense. There you go. So, so regardless, like this is what I think stops a lot of people is that for some reason we feel like it has to be within proximity of us. And we're like, oh no, I need to be able to drive there. And then we, we need to step back and say, why do I need to drive there? <laughs> like, what am I actually going to go do something there? Um, I'm my, my goal in investing is for me honestly i want it as far away from me as possible because that keeps my hands off of it and i really want to be a better delegator and i want somebody else taking care of it especially if i'm passively invested in it if i'm actively invested i i do have somebody that's boots on the ground i happen to not be that person but somebody on the partnership is right so we want to think about what what kind of lifestyle are we trying to create Right. So this again goes into mindset really ultimately is what is the lifestyle I'm trying to create? And if it's close to me, is it actually going to hinder me in creating that lifestyle? So you're actually doing yourself a favor by finding a market that is far away for, you know, that makes economic sense to you. And there are definitely, I mean, the Midwest is packed with so many opportunities for cash flowing assets that it would make sense. And for you, if you wanted to go hop on a flight and check them out, it's an easy, short, inexpensive flight to just pop over there and pop back home and, and call it good. So I would say definitely look in the Midwest, uh, we were talking about Ohio earlier. Ohio is super hot. So I, mean, <laughs> I think everybody knows that, <laughs> but, but uh, you know, lots of, lots of opportunity in the Midwest. And then the other thing I would look at is, uh, you know, a lot of people have been, been investing for appreciation. And so I think determining also like, am I investing because I want appreciation or do I want cash flow? And because some of those markets, like if we're going, you know, say in the Kansas City area, we're not going to get as much appreciation necessarily, but we're going to get really substantial cash flow. And so knowing what your ultimate goal is, is really going to help you determine which market you want to go into. And and I always caution people, you know, we don't invest banking on appreciation. That's really speculative. <laughs> Absolutely. And Julie, I, I could not agree more. And, and, and Yunhan, this is such a great question. But one of the, the investors that I follow to piggyback on what Julie is talking about, they talk about, you know, uh, one of the things being important is, is live where you want to live, but invest where the numbers make sense. And what Ju that hits on every point that what of what Julie was just talking about. And as you continue to educate yourself, you'll learn more and more about how being able to invest passively um, in 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 investments with with experienced teams like teams that Julie works with, 
that invest in quality assets and great markets can provide you all the things that you're looking for. And you can be pretty much hands off from there. You just have to vet that team, vet the asset and look at the, whether the numbers make sense. And then boom, you, you're, you're in something and you can do that while continuing to um, do and excel in what you do as a professional. So I think it's the best both worlds and i think it's a such a great question and i i will tell you from experience um uh, my, my wife and i we were very much in in the same aspect where we have to be we have to be there and we have to invest in our backyard and i live not too far from you in westchester county new york and 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 which is another very expensive area and it's just not practical um the numbers don't make sense. And so when we start looking at markets like Alabama and the Carolinas and Ohio and parts of Texas and so on and so forth, um, those areas make a lot of sense. And so getting familiar, coming to things like this where you're able to network and hear from investors and others uh, that are in the community about the, the types of markets that they're investing with, scheduling time with folks like Julie who are here to share these insights with you and building a relationship and rapport with them to say, hey, this is really interesting. And maybe you jive with her and perhaps one day she has a, a, an opportunity for you to look at. Though That's how it happens. And you're, I, I applaud you for taking the time out to invest your time to learn about these types of things. Um, it's, it's really remarkable. So a big shout out to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys so much for um, taking the time. And I think like what Julie has mentioned about um, take, putting your hands off by investing long distance is something that I never thought about. Um, so thank you so much for pointing that out. I think that's very useful for me. Absolutely. Yeah. Who else has questions? Oh, thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else have any questions? Because if you know, I'm, I have so, a few that I'm going to throw Julie in the hot seat for, and uh, and you guys can just uh, to, can uh, can sit there and watch her squirm a little bit. And and uh, so Julie, if you don't mind, I will throw out a couple <laughs> of questions for you. Are you okay with that? Let's do it. I recorded podcasts all, right. all day. Like let's right. let's do this one more well, moment. Here, here you go. Here's here's one that I'm gonna I'm gonna throw at you that actually um you know it reminded me on social media um you've been pretty public about um you are doing this journey on 75 hard which I think is remarkable and I, I would like to learn I would first like you to kind of share with folks what the 75 hard program is all about but in doing that could you also talk a little bit about what has that program or how has that program changed you um from since you since you started it to who you will have become today as a result of investing in this program and 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 staying committed and disciplined to to uh completing it uh, I, I, 75 hard is 75 days. It's to develop mental toughness. You have to do two workouts that are 45 minutes long each day. One of them must be outside. You must drink a gallon of water. You cannot have alcohol. You have to read at least 10 pages minimum of a nonfiction book. Um, and I'm forgetting one other element, maybe two other elements, but you kind of get the idea. And the idea is that you're doing this for 75 days, come hell or high water. And it's really, you know, it's not about, um, while it is very good, oh, I, I'm sorry, you have to choose a nutrition, you know, a diet of some sort to follow. And so while, um, I guess all that to say is one of the biggest things that I've gained from it so far is, uh, we are on macros. My husband and I chose macros as a nutrition plan and I knew our nutrition was in the tank. Um, but I really, I've been busy. I have two companies and I love my investors and I love my coaching clients. So I'm like, I missed, I really let that slack off and got sloppy with our, with our nutrition in our home, which is not a good thing to do at all. And so that's really been where we've elevated. We have learned more. We love chips and salsa. And we found out that Tortilla chips really are not the best for you. Interesting seeing shift. 
respectfully to be disciplined and to be thinking about things. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And my next question it, for you is about, you know, the, the name of this meetup is about wealth mindset and real estate investing. And I know um, from interacting with people like you and and, and being in, in, in your network and others that real estate investing can provide so many things. And one of those things is financial freedom. I want to know what does financial freedom mean to you? Well, I, money is great, but I look at a tool shed of resources. We've got time, talent, energy, money, and I look at all those resources um, strategically. And so financial freedom just helps support using the other resources. And so, and, you know, financial freedom allows me to better use my energy, my, my talents and my time to pour into people. I'm on a mission to support people, to emancipate people from cloudy thinking because we have, God created us with like so much potential within us. It's so unique and most people don't realize that. And I just, uh, the more financially free I am, the more I can pour into people in living a really powerful life. Awesome, awesome. So one of the things that's that is really key in my life from, you know, before kids, with kids, you know, we've kind of embedded these things and in, into our children and my wife and I, we, we really enjoy and love to travel. And I, I know that you, you, you do as well. Can you tell us a little bit about what is one of the best trips that you've taken and why was that? Um, we, we went to Mexico as a family. We took our kids down there for the first time, December of 2019. And it was a spontaneous trip. We trusted intuition really, truly. And we took this trip and it is hands down the trip everybody talks about. And the kids, and we travel as a family to different events and different things. So we, they have opportunities. They've traveled. They've seen things. Um, but that trip, even my son and I, after working out this morning, we were talking about, you know, <laughs> some of the little milkshakey type things that he would get at, you know, at the resort. So everybody's favorite. That's so cool. That's so cool. I still can remember. Um, back in 2019, also just before the world, you know, stopped, um, we uh, we brought our kids to to Jamaica, which is the homeland of my father. And you know, this is the first time our my our kids are younger, and they this is the first time that they had an all inclusive resort, and they lost their minds. They they didn't know they were going up to the to the little food bar and grabbing whatever they wanted, and we were letting them, and they just thought that was the best thing ever. So I thought I think that's really cool, but I think it's so great those memories that you're able to create as a family, um, and that they travel with you and with them forever. And that you can still talk about it to this day that just a few years later is pretty awesome. So thank you for sharing that. So I got two more questions. Then then, then the next one is more about, you know, hey, you you talked earlier before we, we we came on air and you about the deal that you recently closed in Minneapolis, but are there other things that you're working on these days that you, you know, whether it's on your podcast or whether it is in, um, you know, deals that you have going, going on or may have going on that people can reach out to you about just top line. Would you mind sharing a little bit about that? Gosh, there's so much going on. It's, I mean, like, it's just so exciting. Um, we have a ground up development opportunity that is 184 class A multifamily units in Winsome Salem, North Carolina. It's the first ground up development project I've been part of, and it's been exciting. And we're getting ready to finish um, our raise for our construction loan. Um, just absolutely exciting opportunity. Uh, we just launched the, the, it's called CMI. It's a mastermind that is more uh, tailored towards mindset more than the practicalities of apartment investing. And so, you know, we have a group of high performance coaches. And so that's what we're doing. We have, yep, we have a real estate, uh, you know, mechanics of investing and maybe a little mindset. We're like, 
this is all about the mindset of how you do things. And here is the mechanics to support you in this capacity. So that's really fun. And the last super cool thing, so many other cool, cool things, but um, I'm going to be hosting my first in-person event at the Coeur d'Alene Resort in March of next year. And um, we're just really excited. It's just kind of, you know, just going to be a smaller event just to try it out and see how it goes but i'm just excited to serve people and the speaker lineup is phenomenal so cool so cool and i wish you the best of luck with luck with that and if there's anything that i can do to help you out with that you know to reach out for sure um so so uh, congrats and good luck on that for, uh, for sure so the last question that i have for you again the name of this 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 uh meetup is wealth mindset in real estate investing and of course you know these things are very intentional i know the the conscious investor podcast and and all the the things that you have going on in terms of your coaching business as well as your real estate investing business are very much informed by um by conscious thoughtful approaches to things can you tell us a little bit about what does having a wealth mindset mean to you? Be fixated on that one resource and it depletes them of everything else. And so, you know, when we have a wealth mindset, it means that we're looking, we have opportunity everywhere. It means that we already have what we need. We have, God gave us everything we need. And it's just a matter of acting upon it and living living in that state of we have all that we need. And it's just amazing when we live that way that life unfolds before. We don't have to fight to get it. And 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 the where where I, when I was raised, when you hear something like that and you're in church, they say, Amen. And I, that's all I have to say to that. So I want to thank you one last time, Julie, from Three Keys Invested Investments and the Conscious Investor Podcast. Thank you so much for taking the time out to educate all of us from the Wealth Mindset and Real Estate Investing community. I appreciate your time. I thank you for your time. And with that, I'm going to sign off and I'll stop the recording. And I will allow folks to go ahead and, and uh, we'll take a couple minutes, hang back for just a couple